All right, on the line we got Neil Shirley of uh, NV Composites, former Lyman PR agency, former road bike action editor, former pro cyclist, and the <laughs> list goes on. What's up, Neil? Hey, John. Thanks for having me on, man. No worries. Uh, always have to get you on this, especially about PWR. You know, I have a feeling we'll probably talk to you a couple more times before this event actually happens to get a, get a little inside intel from you. Nice. But um, nice. what's the latest? How's the weather up there in Utah? You moved uh, away from sunny Southern California. <laughs> I, I did, Utah. although you guys have been getting some rain, which is uh, I'm happy to see. Um, it was snow. <laughs> it was snowing today. So we actually, uh, the weather the temps got above the 30s so felt warm for a while and then we had more snow again so you know if i rode the trainer i'd probably be doing that but since i don't really ride the trainer i'm really not doing much of, of anything so there's that was it, do you do you own a trainer i, I do own a trainer yeah i have a bike oh, it, it, it's a it's bummer. kind of a bike stand how i use it <laughs> <laughs> you got a peloton right <laughs> <laughs> yeah can't afford uh, that stuff come on john <laughs> uh okay let's talk some bwr um you have been there since like the beginning so yeah. let's just jump into as far as what's your first like what, what i mean what like what's the the oldest memory or i don't say oldest or first but like what the first time you heard about bwr like what was that <laughs> there we go uh, uh i think so i got an email from michael marks um you know, the, everyone knows Michael Marks. And, uh, but at that time, I think that was like 2012, probably like in January, I got an email from him. Somehow my email ended up on his list, probably because I was at road bike action at the time. And, but, you know, just talking about some crazy event that was, you know, 130 ish miles long and a bunch of dirt, but I didn't, I had no idea what to really expect. And I was like, Oh, okay. I was kind of like just a couple years out of post, you know, post pro racing and still like kind of looking, still motivated to keep riding hard and, and doing new things. And I was like, Oh, that sounds interesting. So I went out and I did, and it was just kind of like that invite only first year. I think there were like 130 people or something like that. And truly just no idea what I was getting myself into that first year. And I think all of us were, were in that same boat, except for like Michael, who, you know, yeah, he, 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 he dream, dream this up. And, you know, I think it was, he loved seeing the reaction <laughs> from everyone, but yeah, what a, what a truly wild day. And it was, it was like not long into that ride. I was like, wow, this is, this is going to be something special. So that first year when you did that, was it kind of like, did it kind of have that vibe of like a race or was it kind of like maybe that fondo relaxed, like everyone's kind of hanging out and just kind of whittled down or was there any like type type of racey scenario or like, or how was that first one to, to such an unknown? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was very much like, you know, it's almost it, like had that, it was, it was like an underground race. Like it had, you know we were ripping down the bike path at like speeds that we had no business riding on the bike path on. And, um, it, it was very much like that, that kind of throw down vibe. Um, I think that's what Michael wanted from the very beginning. So it was, it was, it was fun in the, in the sense that like we were, you know, it wasn't just this casual group ride at all. And then, you know, we're veering onto these sections that we had no business being on our, 25 c tires and drop bar bikes but like we're like okay cool it says go this way we're going this way so yeah it was it was pretty wild so what what did you ride that first year or like what i mean i what what was or before we say like what did you ride what was the course kind of like you said it was like about 130 miles or so but what was i mean we all know the train that's usually given yeah. at pwr each year now but it's always different but so what was that first year terrain consistent enough I would, I would say it was a pretty good mix of essentially what we have now. Like, you know, there wasn't, you know, Black, Black Canyon that wasn't in there, but the Lake Hodges stuff was in there, um, the very first year. Um, so yeah, it, it was, you know, a lot of different sections than we're doing now, but more or less like more of the same. 
So dirt connectors, I, I would say maybe it's a, even a little more technical now than it was. But I think the, the what made it even harder year one was that we just didn't even know what to expect. Now, like the stories are out there. People know what they're getting into for the most part. But back then it was like, I, you know, I didn't know what I was in for. <laughs> I knew I could. Did, like, I knew I could ride 130 miles, but that was about. That's about all I knew. Did like like what did Michael? Did he tell you like, hey, there's gonna be like this much dirt, or there's gonna be like this much like this or that, or was it just like, hey, come check this thing out? I'm working on. Yeah, no, I we knew that there was gonna be dirt, but it's like you come from, you know, it, it, there weren't other events like this yet, right? So so now you can kind of prepare, you know, with a other number of other events that are are not this not the same and nothing's the same as bwr but there's other stuff that you can ride dirt on road bikes and and people just do more of that now than they used to um but back then it, it was like came from you know pro road racing where things are like very well or not uh you you know a hundred percent like you got the course profiles you know when that next right turn is coming up and then like BWR is just like this completely different animal and it's not, it, you know, it wasn't scripted. So, so that was the thing. It was just like, Whoa. And it was, it was amazing. It, it It's just that we're like, I didn't know where I was going most of the time. And I think pretty much everyone who was in the same boat. In fact, in fact, there were like three of us that rode off the front and missed a section of the course um unfortunately so but, uh, but we made it to the finish line and uh, we thought we were duking it out for the win but we ended up we weren't <laughs> <laughs> all right Neil. come on now all right so back to all right now that we know the course was i'm gonna just say that you probably showed up on just a straight road bike yeah, so I don't even. Doing? I I know what I I know what I I rode a specialized tarmac road bike rim brakes, um, twenty eight C tires. I rode that year two, um, but the first year I truly I can't remember what bike I was on. But I, I've I've always ridden twenty eight C tires, um, every year except for this year, um, which I ran thirties, um, and I've done last every, year going into this year. Uh, last year, so I, I used some Mavic All Road 30C tires. So that's the okay. biggest I've used there. And every other year, I've used 28C. Um, yeah. So, and you know, I've done every I've done every edition of BWR so far. Is there a reason why you just want to stick to the the smaller tires, or I mean, what do you what are you gonna run this year? Um, I'll run, I'll probably run 32C, the IRC Serac tires. Um, I mm -hmm. use those at the BWR survival camp in January and it's just, it's a, it's a really great tire, you know, on either the NV G23 rims or the 4.5 ARs, depending on how fast I'm feeling that day. Um, will depend on my setup. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think that you know, back year one, year two, like there just really weren't, I, you know, I could have benefited from a 30 or 32 C tire, but honestly, those, they weren't, they weren't there. Like tubeless, a good tubeless tire in that size didn't exist. So I was running, um, like continental grand prix four seasons. So like kind of a really robust training tire, durable training tire, but that was just, I needed the durability and I had, I ran tubes in it. So I ran like way too much tire pressure. I probably ran like 85 PSI and 28 C tires, which is just, you know, yeah, you're roadie. You, you get abused out there. <laughs> total roadie, total roadie. Um, Standard. Yeah. So that's actually kind of like light, like that's kind of low actually. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. It was only double. It was below triple digits. So yeah. it's low. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's remarkable now, like where technology is, you know, wheel, tire, bike, all, all these things that, you know, disc brakes on a road bike back in 2012. Like, yeah, there are probably, you know, there were a few bikes out there, but not like performance bikes. Um, no. now, like, man, we have, we have such an amazing selection of equipment that is really designed for this kind of segment of riding now where, before it just wasn't it wasn't even an option 
so since you've done BWR in its entirety and you know you've you've raced road professionally and then you know you, you you've kind of seen the landscape of cycling whether it's you know recreational or professional mm -hmm. how do you feel looking at it as a whole from BWR year one when you did it you didn't really know what it was it's underground and now it's gonna it's turning into a legit race uh, I always say it's kind of like a marathon style to where like it's just like there's gonna be pros and there's like you know everyone else and everyone's running the same course but you know this year there's big sponsors on board you know media's coming out there will be world tour pros there you know yep. going for this so how do you feel from like year one to where it's gotten it now as far as like it's just morphed into this you know not so much bwr in itself but just like the landscape of cycling in the u.s yeah. how it, this is now a thing compared to like obviously racing in the u.s yeah you know it's a little like domestically isn't you know, the healthiest but yeah. you know it, it's kind of like this just almost you know it's it, it's this weird like parallel these two segments are running through but it's like it seems like one side's kind of going down a little bit and one side's coming up really quick yeah, well, I'd say you know when BWR first started, it was just it was it was really it was just fun, but you weren't did I did I think that it would have a draw of world tour riders? Like, I don't know. I mean, Marks that's been his dream all along. Like, and he's been talking about like he sees this as as you know the the next the evolution of racing, which maybe it took me a couple of years, a few years to see that. And, you know, maybe, yeah, this BWR style is not necessarily going to take over like world tour level racing as we know it today. But like you said, I mean, there, there's a real, there's a real draw to it now and they're not doing it for the prize list, right? Even though there is going to be a prize list this year, you know, for those guys, that's not what's motivating them. It's because that's, this segment is where the media coverage is and where the attention is. And it's, you know, when, when Cannondale or Trek, you know, they spend millions of dollars on their world tour team and they realize all of a sudden that BWR is where they want to reach their current customers and future customers. Like that's a, you know, that's a big draw right there. So that's, that's how they can influence things. And then the riders are like, well, yeah, that, actually sounds kind of cool because that's the type of riding I do when I'm training. So why not try and race it too? So yeah, it is pretty crazy to see in, in eight years, like where BWR is now, but it's not really, I guess, such a stretch because it's just, it's really, it's really fun. And you can see why like the desire is there and, and, you know, from, from pro level riders all the way down to like someone that's like, scared to death lining up trying to do their first year having no idea if they're going to make it through or not like that's you know that's a huge motivator do you think like you know all these events are just especially like the you know the gravel segment which bwr is not really a gravel event you know michael no. even say that himself it's like he plays yeah. it, you know it's uh you know a classic style event sure and but you still have this gravel segment that's like getting big and of course you have all these events popping up um you know dirty kanza kind of i don't want to say paved the way but like kind of legit not you know legitimize it is like that's like a full-on race now you have all these other events popping up mm -hmm. that i see um or you know everyone sees do you think there's going to be more events that'll pop up like bwr in the fact that it's not uh you know it's not a uci pro race but people go there and treat it like a race but then also you have everyone like you just said that wants to just go and do it um do you see other events like it but not what i'm getting to is not just pure gravel because there's a ton of these yeah. gravel events popping up like dk and all these other ones do you see a hybrid mixture coming up similar to bwr because as of right now i haven't seen anyone else do yeah, something like that yeah no that's a really good point i would say 100 percent for sure and i'm i'm shocked that there aren't others that have taken the bwr model and just tried to replicate that and and maybe some have but what i think what bwr had initially was like you know the mad genius of of michael marx you know who is is just really incredible at like creating buzz and he had the backing of spy at the same time which just straight out of the blocks had this 
huge marketing power. And that really helped build what they were doing immediately. Whereas, you know, a smaller independent um, race promoter d- doesn't have these resources to kick something off so, so quickly. Um, but I, I do, there's, you know, there is so much demand for this type of riding that is still within the realm of road riding and road racing and not necessarily gravel per se that I am surprised that there hasn't been another one or two like national level events that really popped up and grabbed our attention. So like looking over, you know, the years that you've done it now, other than, you know, it's getting bigger by the numbers and like, you know, obviously more sponsors and media is coming on board. Like what, what have you really seen change? And it doesn't have to be at the event, but like it's something, you know, within the event or, you know, the industry, like what, what have you seen change across the years that, you know, role with this event? Well, I think, you know, one thing I already touched on was honestly like the equipment advancement. Um, as more and more riders got into this, this scene and were doing different things on drop bar bikes, like the industry finally caught up and are providing tires and, and frames and wheels that actually allow you to have a better experience, fewer flat tires, ride safer, all these things that all of a sudden when, you know, when that equipment is available, then more riders are going to commit to experiencing this. So that's the very positive thing. Um, Also, I would say how many, you know, before BWR, like how many riders would think about going and doing a, you know, almost 140 mile ride in you know doing that annually right and then you take that 140 miles and add in 40 plus miles of dirt and out of those 40 plus miles of dirt how much of it is actually better suited to a mountain bike and these are like these are not pros these are you know people that were maybe doing like century rides before and stuff and now they're experiencing something like bwr and like growing as cyclists and building this confidence in the type of riding they're doing. And like, to me, like that's the most powerful thing, like what it's doing for, for the cycling community. And now you look at these BWR prep events and the rides that they have, but I, I don't know if they're monthly or the weekly rides down in San Diego. And it's not just in San Diego now, like they're popping up everywhere. And it just has created this whole community of people that enjoy doing, you know, similar type of rides and stuff that just didn't even exist eight years ago. One thing I've always been curious on, on this style of event and <clears throat> these different types of events is like, I, I don't really think you can pinpoint it down to one certain thing, but it, it's always there. Like you've, you've done the road racing thing, you know, um, you've done all the, the big races and you know, just like how serious that atmosphere <laughs> is, yeah. whether that's during post pre you know there's not a lot of fun going on i mean yeah you know depends but like you know it's like super serious right but then you go to these these other events and then you know we'll talk about bwr like it's a hard ride you're out there all day you obviously have to train for these things the legit guys are showing up but you do not get that like super serious vibe ever i mean you know it, after it's fun beers are flowing before it's joking around during like it's still really hard and like it's still an effort but like it's just a completely different atmosphere and i don't know what it is to pinpoint it on i think it's a majority of all these little things that add up but it's just you know it's wild to think like you, you're you're you know you're kind of out of competition at both ends you know whether it's the big road race or a vwr but it's like it's the damn near same thing you're riding a bike but it's so different yeah. And I mean, obviously that's what's doing really well for all these other events, but like, I just, I don't know, like, what are your thoughts? Like, what's, what is it that just makes it so different? Yeah, I think it's the, you know, these, you can take pro level riders and you put them in this environment and pro road racing, you know, that you have to be a hundred percent serious. And like, if you have a bad performance on the day, it's that day is a failure right? There's no other way around it because you're hundred percent judged on your performance at these events. Like you can still take it a hunt, you know, as seriously as you want, you can go in and want to win and have all these goals and train hard for it. But 
I would say for just about everyone out there, even if they have a bad day, like it's the environment that allows them to be like, well, that's a bummer, but guess what? I still had a blast out there. And like, I don't think there are many people that, that make it to the finish line at BWR. Hopefully there's no one that makes it to the finish line at BWR and is like, oh man, that was a bummer of a day. I mean, you can have, you know, both of us, like we know we've had terrible days out there, right, John? Where like, you don't Uh, even know if, (laughs) you don't even know if you're going to be able to like, you know, you might be walking up double peak at the end, you know, that's, that's fine, you know, but just knowing that you're going to get to the end, you're going to cross that line and then like the relief, it'll be over, you'll have achieved and accomplished it and then. You get to crack open a Lost Abbey beer and eat some, you know, food from Sam Ames and like start telling stories with your buddies out there. And like to know that everyone's in that same boat and regardless if it was like a personal best or you won or you're, you know, coming in at, you know, when it was after dark, like that doesn't, it doesn't matter. And like, that's, that's really the vibe that is, that is special with BWR. I'm pretty sure I... Nine nine percent sure it was you. It was I don't know if I only was last year, maybe the year before, and it was like hopefully I'm not getting this mixed up with like I don't think it was DK, but like I saw you after, like right after, and you were like, Don't talk to me, I'll be right back. Or like just did like you were in a zone that was not not a good spot. Yeah. To where I was like, I need a moment. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I saw you later think- and you had a beer <laughs> and it's like all good, but you were there and I was like, Oh, I need to go take a break and be by myself. Yeah. I needed some quiet time after the 2017 BWR. And that's, and you know, that's <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've had like, you know, I've won, I've won BWR twice and that's really special to me. And then I, the funny thing is like those times, like those were like some of the easiest rides I've had out there. Cause you know, I was fit, everything worked out really well. And then the, but the days that I really remember the ones were like, do you, you have to dig deep just to make it through the day. And those are the ones like, man, it, it, it hurts, but those are the, those are the memorable ones. And like, and not a bad memory. It's just like it, it, I just look at it as like, Hey, building character. And like, that's the experience that, 90% 90% of the people are having out there. They're digging deep, making it through the, to the end and like true dedication, overcoming, overcoming barriers like cramps and multiple flat tires and just all these things with just that drive to make it across the line. So before we start wrapping this up, we got, we got some questions. Uh, you know, we, we both put out, um, see if anyone's got questions for, the legendary Neil Shirley as we're gonna have a chat this week. Uh some pretty straightforward questions and I got a few of my own I always like to Uh-oh. ask everyone before they get off. But uh so uh we got a we got a question from Mike and this could go for another whole hour long podcast. We'll we'll see what your two cents are. He just asked, What is the ideal tire size for the VWR? Yeah, that's a Don't good one. Don't know his skill level, so shot in the dark yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah, so so that's that's the thing, like there are, when you go to Dirty Kanza, there's like the, you know, the bike setup, right? Gravel bike, probably like 40C tires. And anywhere from the winner to the person that's just trying to make that time, that time cut off, like it's a pretty good setup for everyone. Out at BWR, there's, there's really two completely different bikes. One, the type of bike that the podium contenders will ride. And that's like 28 to 32 C tire and a road, typically a road bike. And then there is the other group of riders that are probably not that comfortable in the dirt. They want a little more security and just a little more comfort. And so I'd say that's like anywhere from a 32 to a 36 C tire. So I, I think figuring out like where where you think your weaknesses are going to be. If, if the dirt is something you're afraid of, you're not that, that comfortable in Err on the side of a larger, higher volume tire. And that will allow you to get through the day, um, in a more comfortable way. Yeah. You'll have a little more tire, a little more weight, 
to push around on the pavement, but being able to like be, be confident in the dirt is, that's a really, really important thing at BWR. All right, Michael, we hope that answers your question. Neil's got the knowledge on that. So we got, a uh, so we got Alan. So he wants to know wheel choice and, uh, he said more so depth of the wheel. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, this kind of goes back to, are you a podium contender? Or are you, you know, where, where do you fall in the spectrum of level of riders? Like, you know, the, the G23, which is a shallow mid 20 millimeter depth rim that Envy makes is a really comfortable, compliant wheel. That's amazing in the dirt. It's designed for gravel specifically, but it's not going to provide like the aerodynamic advantage of like the 4.5 AR, which so 100% was developed around team dimension data for Perry Roubaix. Um, so it's made for a wider, a wider tire. You can easily fit like a 32 C tire on there and you have the aerodynamic benefit, but that is also a wheel that's designed for riding at higher speeds. So, you know, if you're, if you're really racing and you're, you know, you're probably going to average, you know, upper teens speed wise on the day, then, then you truly can get an aerodynamic advantage. And that's where maybe something in the, the mid forties into the mid fifties, um, in, in depth millimeters in depth, um, could be a, could be an advantage. So really it, it comes down to, to rider speed. All right. So we got Steven saying, Neil, what is your go-to nutrition for long rides? Um, I would say, I would say for specifically for BWR on race day, um, I always start, I start with three bottles, um, two, the two bottle, well, all three bottles actually with some liquid nutrition in there since it's really hard to start eating the first two to kind of three hours for Belgian waffle ride. If you look at how the course goes, you have neutral, um, which is a pretty hectic where you wouldn't want to start, you know, I'm never that comfortable eating. Plus you're not really hungry yet because you're just starting. So having some mix in the bottles, maybe about 200 calories. Um, there's a number of good products out there. I think first endurance is a good one. Um, GQ six as well. Good product cliff. There's, there's a lot of good options out there, but anyway, so you can easily just, you can be drinking and not have to be trying to eat a bar because you go neutral into lemon twistenberg into the lake hodges section into highland climb so basically you're probably about 40 miles into bwr before the course ever lets up to where you can rest and really be able to take in some calories some solid calories so starting with liquid nutrition so that you can easily drink go through one full bottle in the neutral um, and then toss it in the first feed zone or, or area where you can get rid of a bottle. And then you still have two full bottles with mix that you're comfortable that you know is going to, um, digest well and not give you any GI distress. Um, and then, you know, you're a good 40 miles in. If you, if, if you haven't taken in calories and you, you get 30 to 40 miles in on that day, like you're screwed. You're, you're already way you know, you're way behind in caloric intake. So I'd say that's, that would be my, my advice. Like start out planning your, your first couple hours, three hours, um, with liquid calories. And then when things mellow out, you're not around a bunch of people, you can take your hands off the bars and comfortably, you know, start eating like a bonk breaker bar or something like that. Yeah, and something to add to that too, because that is so crucial with like those first 40 miles that if you're doing the liquid nutrition route, which is, you know, pretty spot on, um, make sure your bottle cages hold your bottle <laughs> over rough terrain because yeah. it's just like you see bottles flying everywhere. And if you're, if you're like, okay, well, I'm going to do liquid nutrition, then obviously that there goes that idea. But then you just can't eat because yeah, it's pretty hectic those first 40 miles and it's rough and, and you're just, you're just going to be, you're going to be done. So that's simple, easy, but make sure you have some really strong cages. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, water bottle cages have one job 
And if it doesn't do that, <laughs> you had get, one job, <laughs> one job, one job only. And if it cannot hold your bottles, if you've ever lost a bottle from your cages, take them off and replace them. Put some lasagna cages on, or you know, don't that's go what fancy I use. With carbon, just yeah. Get some really. Don't don't look to save weight on the water bottle cages. Get something that holds your bottles because. BWR will test you know, those cages 100%. Good, good little, little neat nook crayon right there. All right, so we got um Amanda. She wants to know: Are you going to go for the win this year? <laughs> um, I'm I would gonna say you better be. <laughs> I would love to think that I that I could, but I simply do not. There's too many good guys now, and I don't ride my bike nearly enough. <gasps> and this and this snow definitely does not help. So. Um, Your altitude training. That's called altitude <laughs> training. You're going to come down to sea level and you're like, oh, I got an extra couple of years. It's great. It's easy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be easy. Yeah, I, know, I know how you work. Uh, um, okay. No, my, um, my goal is to, to finish when there's still beer left. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I might be. I'll, I'll save one for you because, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably not gonna do the long one. <laughs> uh, I thought we were gonna be ride buddies this year, John. I I try to be ride buddies all the time, and now you just uh yeah okay. Speaking of ride buddies, I don't know what this is gonna have to do with it, but I I want to ask you this. Last year, you were flying in the beginning, and well, I mean, I'm gonna say the part that I saw because like I didn't see you middle or end. So you were like not sitting in. You were on the front. People were even like, dude, Neil is on a good one today like he's going for it <laughs> but you know it didn't work <laughs> like the shoot the you know i know the wheels kind of came undone and but like were you just how confident were you like you're on the front pulling everyone up every climb that, that first you know 40 miles we we're just talking about like we were going yeah. in the dirt in the beginning in the lead and i, I really i'm like oh neil's been training he's on it yeah but what, well what, like a little when, insiders when, what was going on through your head right there well when you're when you come into the dirt section with like the first or the second dirt section with or first first and then second with like 30 plus guys surrounding you 50 people whatever it is like i i decided to use a little extra energy and just be able to be in the front and pick my lines um so if you know i could just have a clear line of sight for anything and you know anyone that's ridden around the lake hodges area we know that like there's some really sketchy rock areas so just being able to to pick your line is an advantage and then like on highland you know yeah i felt good i felt good until i didn't last yeah, year. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so that <laughs> end of the story <laughs> okay what mileage what mileage marker were you like Ooh, i'm feeling it like i'm, I'm feeling it now Ooh. Yeah, it, I I never. What happened was, um, it was on Black. It was on Black Canyon when when the second part of Black Canyon when all the attacks started going and our group went from like fifteen down to like seven, and I just didn't have that high end. My upper limit wasn't there, and I came undone. So then, just went into went into riding mode after that, and, and it got a lot more peaceful. <laughs> See, that'll be buddy buddy mode and when you want yeah. to do that from the beginning we can do it that sounds good to me <laughs> <laughs> okay so um i always want to ask everyone this thing and uh, you don't have to go into too too detail on this um but what what are your personal top three tips for uh you know just for anyone doing vw you're obviously not you know like the good top pro guys but you know just kind of your average show just coming out here maybe for the first time from Tennessee or wherever that is, and they've never been to BWR, but they see all the, the stuff online. Like they don't know what they're getting themselves into. They're terrified of what Michael's saying. Yeah, um, what do you, what do you, what's three? Yeah, what's three tips you got for them? Um, it's a really really long day. Everyone feels good early on, so just be mindful that you're not going to feel good the second half. And so when you're doing when you're charging up climbs early on maybe just shift two gears easier sit down and relax a little bit because you're gonna wish you had all those efforts back do you wish you had all those efforts back last year yes yes i do <laughs> i should have I, I need to heed my own advice um so that that's number one 
uh, no one has ever finished BWR and said, man, I wish I had harder gears. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> never heard like that. that. <laughs> so, uh, you should never have a standard crank compact for sure. Make sure like 1136 on the back. Why not? Right. You're going to use it. If it's there, you're going to use it. So go, go, go big on the gears. Um, what would number three be? Let's see. Um, eat, eat and drink often, especially like what I was saying early, early on. That's, you're not hungry yet. You're not thirsty yet. You're just getting going. You're excited. Um, you feel great, but you are burning calories. Um, you're sweating. You need to make sure that if you want to set yourself up for success for the second half and finish still with, you know, feeling halfway decent or at least just being able to finish, you need to be mindful of that you are burning calories. You need to be taking in 250 calories an hour, every single hour, including hour one. So whatever you need to do to make that happen, but it's easy to forget unless you really practice it in training. All right. I like it. All good. All right. Well, uh, before wrapping this up, uh, we're going to do this again with, uh, yourself and, um, and Jake, who is what's what's his title? If, if, if anyone doesn't know, Neil works for Envy Composites, so yeah, we're gonna so, give him give him a ring. And Jake, who is a uh, yeah, Jake, Jake Pan Jake Pantone has been uh, <laughs> he's been at Envy since the very beginning, so going on twelve years, and he's the VP of of he's basically the the product brand manager. Um, so. He's been in the development of all the all the rims, all the wheels that have come out of of Envy. Um, all of our rims are made right right where I'm at in Ogden, Utah. Um, so we'll uh, we'll connect with Jake and talk about some of the technology um, that's really over the last couple of years has been refined for this type of riding. So that'll be a yeah. fun conversation. We'll geek out for sure. And uh, if anyone has any, you know, concern. Or- questions you know more tech driven you know let us know and we'll be sure to get to them for that for that episode but um yeah so neil you know stay warm sounds like it's not out there but um <laughs> you're getting your altitude training for bwr so i am good. taking it seriously <laughs> <laughs> and uh thanks again for all the good nuggets and all the good info and we will see you uh see you in may all right thanks john all right talk soon you and me.